Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash, and this is episode 67 in the series. I'm calling this one Milling Fiber, Making Stories, and Messing Up. And I think I'll start out with the messing up part, but after some introductions. So <laughs> I'm coming to you from Urbana, Illinois, where I'm a professor at the university there. And it is a Friday morning, a little early for me for the cast, uh, but we are gonna take a little Thanksgiving breather from the semester and from everything, so I wanted to get this done and out into the world before um, the week of break descends upon us. Um, what else should I tell you? Where you can find me? Most of you guys know if you're returning viewers, welcome back! <laughs> um, you can find me just about everywhere as Knitting the Stash on Instagram and Ravelry and on the blog, which is knittingthestash.wordpress.com and of course here on YouTube. And you guys often ask what I'm wearing and today I'm wearing the Monier sweater. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that perfectly. It's M-O-I-N-E-A-R, Monier sweater uh, by Albina McLaughlin of LB Hand Knits. And she actually gifted me this sweater. So I don't know much about it from a knitting perspective yet, though I did, um, download the pattern so that I could maybe knit another one because I love the way it fits me. It actually sits correctly on my shoulders. Um, I love the yoke pattern and then I love the little the cuff detail with the color work. Um, I think it's just a gorgeous Albina sweater as usual. So thank you Albina for the beautiful gift. And uh, there are thank yous to be had all around. I've got my um, list up here. I wanted to make sure that I thanked my test knitters for the um, Rose Cottage Cap which just came out recently. Um, and that was Chantal, Dolores, Jean, Julianne, uh, Michelle, Sophia, Stephanie, and Teresa. Thank you all so much for test knitting that hat in under a week, giving me feedback and comments and making the final pattern so much better. I really appreciate all of your work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and there will be another call for test knitters in about maybe two weeks. Uh, my shorn yarn is going to be birthed into the world <laughs> sometime in January and we're in the pattern design phase right now. And Kefren Pritchett, um, is, who's an amazing designer, has agreed to put together a hat pattern and a mitt pattern for the new yarn. So I'll put out a call for test knitters here in a couple of weeks. Um, and if you're interested, you can get in on those. That, there'll be a much better um, deadline on those. Maybe <clears throat> uh, we probably more like a month. Um, so there'll be plenty of time to do the test knitting. And my computer email is going off as usual. So I'm gonna turn that down. So what's gonna happen on this cast? Well, I have my mistake back here that we need to talk about. Uh, I've got some info about Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mill, uh, which Ann Bosch is the owner operator up there. And she and I have been in touch, um, as you might've seen from the interview on the blog. So we've got a little more info about the woolen mills, uh, including some of her beautiful yarn to talk about and for a giveaway. Uh, I have a Making Stories magazine review and in a supplement to this podcast episode, I'm going to be answering your questions about processing fiber and woolen mills. So I won't stick it in the podcast because it's just going to be its own half hour um, little segment. So I'll put that as a separate video in case you just want to go over and get those answers. But that's where um, I will try to answer most of the questions that you guys posed for the last giveaway. Um, so maybe we'll jump right in and get started with the gorilla in the room. As some of you know, we're in the midst of a cal for um, knits in translation. So I'm working on a sweater from a pattern that was written completely in Norwegian. And it's been a fun and wonderful process, except for what Spencer and I have come to call the gorilla in the room. And, and I think maybe that's where we need to start out today. So we'll start with the gorilla in the room, go on to some milling uh, fiber questions, and then talk about making stories, plus the giveaway winners for the Independence Fiber Mill, all that wonderful um, yarn and the t-shirt. Um, and I have a new giveaway for you too. So there's a lot to do. Um, but let me jump in with the, uh, the old gorilla here. All right, I'm gonna move, I, I'm gonna move her up. There was uh, some conversation about uh, what I should name the mannequin, and uh, I have not yet named her, but I got some really good suggestions, so I need to think about that. But let me bring her up and show you what's going on. So, <clears throat> so, so, so. Sweater's going great in terms of fit, right? I just finished the top portion. I'm working in a completely different gauge than the pattern. This is the Rosenblum um, Jensef uh, by Trina Lisa Horth. Uh, I'm not pronouncing your name right. I'm gonna put it down here so that I'm not gonna try to pronounce it again. Um, she's a great designer and she designed this sweater in Norwegian. Uh, so 
I am not working in the gauge of the pattern. I'm not working with the yarn of the pattern. I'm not working in the sizes of the pattern. <laughs> so let me just add, you know, like doing a pattern in translation needs not only translating the pattern, but then actually doing all the sweater math too. So um, it's been a little complicated. But I managed last night, I did my three needle bind off on the um, top of the shoulders, which is not called for in the pattern, but which is the way I like to do it. And at that point I was like, okay, it's the moment of truth. I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna see if it fits. And there are some key things about fit here. You know, where this line falls, you don't want this line to fall in certain areas of the, the bust, as you might say, right? Um, where the bind off for the neck starts and for the collar, you don't want it to be too low or too high. Um, and then the armholes shaping, did I get that right? You know, is it a large enough armhole? Did it, does it sit right? Um, width in the back for my shoulders, which tend to be fairly wide. Did I manage to come in enough to go up to the shoulders? Uh, and then the question of, the very basic question of like, is the measurement from here down to here suitable? Or is like the whole sweater just kind of like hitched up and in a funny place? All those, an those questions were answered last night when I put the sweater on and it fit, it fit like a dream. It's like perfect on the shoulders, perfect length. This, all the lines and the, the bits for the collar, everything is just like so good. And I'm really happy with the fit. I was actually dancing around the living room and like singing and you know, <laughs> Spencer came in and he was like, oh my God, you did it. You know, like hooray, like congratulations. And, and I was talking to him about like, you know, uh, he was asking about the collar and the construction. So I showed him the pattern. Well, I've been working on this sweater how long? At least a month, right? Spencer and I've talked about it. He's seen photographs, I've seen photographs, you've seen photographs. Okay, here's the gorilla in the room, right? You guys know the selective attention psychological test where, you know, like the teacher asks you, okay, we're gonna show you a video and I want you to count how many times the kids bounce the basketballs. So you're like watching the basketballs bounce, you're like 1,501, 1,502. And what you don't notice is that in the midst of this basketball bouncing exercise, a man in a gorilla suit walks through the video, not just once, but twice usually. You can go look this up on YouTube, selective attention test or the gorilla test. And if you're counting the basketballs, you don't notice the gorilla, <laughs> unless you're like primed to recognize, oh, this is the gorilla test. So this is why it's my gorilla. I'm counting everything. You know, I'm making sure that all the stitches are right. It took me days to, you know, go through and make sure that the armholes and the neck shaping and everything was gonna be up to gauge and, you know, up to snuff. Well, the gorilla in the room is that uh, I mixed up the colors on the lower part of the sweater. Yeah, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. So I was knitting this and I'm thinking to myself, God, it's really bright white. You know, like the sweater in the pictures is not bright white. It's it's like a very subtle kind of like earthy, you know, it's, it's knit in brown granted, but, but it's not bright around the middle torso place where you don't really want a lot of attention, right? You know, on your torso. And I kept thinking, well, maybe it's just because I'd switched to the purple yarn. You know, maybe the purple yarn does something that the kind of brownish yarn, the ochre yarn didn't do. But it's really just the fact that I mixed up the two colors. And I can tell you why I mixed up the two colors. Because I was looking at the pattern and not only was I counting basketball bounces instead of paying attention to the color work, but in the pattern itself, the chart looks like this. So the, the what's in purple here is in is a, in a darker spot on the chart. I should I should pull it up and show you guys because it's pretty um, it's pretty telling. Okay. So if you look at the chart for the sweater, here you have it. How would you interpret that chart? Well. If I weren't counting basketballs and trying to translate from Norwegian, <laughs> I might have read the key to the chart, which actually inverts the two colors. But if you just look at the chart, you think to yourself, okay, dark color goes in the center, light color goes on the outside. Not so. Because if you look at the construction of the sweater, this is the background color, which would mean the, that it should be all of this white space should be purple and the only white should be the little pattern dots, right? So if you look at the actual pattern, that's what they do. The little whites, see the, see the, the brown ochre is all, is the majority of the space and then the little kind of pattern is just in white. Complete reversal. 
complete gorilla in the room. So I went from dancing around and singing and being like, I did my sweater, it fits me, I'm so smart with the sweater math, to being like, oh my God, like seriously, seriously. So I actually had nightmares about it last night and I was walking with Spencer at five in the morning with the dogs and I was just, he was like, so what are you gonna do? He's being very supportive. He's a very, he's, you guys know, he's a very kind, wonderful person. And he said he felt really bad about being the one to be like, um, did you, did you notice the... So I said, I think what I have to do, cause this is a sweater that I really, like there's a reason I wanted to knit this sweater. It's like my, my kind of like sporty woodsy style. And I don't, like the way this looks and I know it took a long time to knit but here's the solution and you guys are gonna think I'm absolutely crazy or a genius either way I'm gonna pick up stitches here I'm gonna pick up stitches here I'm gonna order some more yarn and I'm going to pop this whole center section out and make it into a pillow and then I will forever remember the gorilla in the room and it will be a pillow that can sit in the yarn room and I can enjoy it it's beautiful it's perfect size for a pillow and I will re-knit this part of the sweater correctly because I want to wear this sweater and I don't feel comfortable wearing the sweater right now because of the, I described it as like, I feel like I'm in a fish barrel with suspenders on it because it's so white. It's just so bright around the torso. So that's my plan and I think I'm gonna do it and uh, I think I need to uh, talk to Corinne of the Woolly Thistle and order more of this yarn. So that's the solution. That's my gorilla. If you guys have any other consoling words for me, I would deeply appreciate them. <laughs> and yeah, and if you've ever had a gorilla in the room kind of story where you're so focused on getting everything else right about a sweater that you just, you know, miss the main point, uh, I'd love to hear your stories. So please let me know. All right, gorilla in the room is over. Let's move on to um, milling fiber and let me move let me move, let me move the gorilla back just a little bit. Not out of the frame, but just behind me. So let's set our gorillas aside, shall we? And move on to questions about fiber milling and fiber milling um, in general. So one thing that prompted this, like I said, was your questions from the last giveaway. Um, but I've also been in conversation with Anne Bosch, um, who is the owner and operator of uh, Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mill up in Wisconsin, just um, just west of Madison. Uh, it's a great little mill. I've heard their name so many times. So when Anne got in touch with me, and we ended up doing a blog spot and an interview with her. And then we ended up talking because she's, the mill is for sale. And you know, <laughs> I can barely resist that kind of thing. And I, I, Spencer and I have talked seriously about trying to run a mill um, before talking to Anne, but then, you know, this opportunity to think about even purchasing a mill that's running with operators who have, have 30 years of experience and, Anyway, so Anne and I got to talking even more than we did on the um, the blog spot that you saw over on the interview on the blog. And she answered so many of my questions about what it's like to run a mill, um, you know, financially and practically and, and all of those kinds of things. And then um, actually there was, there's this other um, person who was also thinking about running the mill, um, Alina Jordan. And uh, Alina and I got to talking. We spent a, an hour or so on the phone the other night just talking about milling and what it's like to have this, you know, members of this next generation want to get involved in milling fiber and keeping these mills alive and, you know, what are some of the ways to do it? Can we do it as a community supported thing? You know, she has little children. I have a day job and it's kind of like, it's always complicated and the timing is always a little bit not right. But I, I do think there's something to be said for this next generation wanting to run these mills and trying to figure out ways to move the equipment around, to open them up and to think about milling fiber. So, it's been a really interesting couple of weeks, um, kind of digging into fiber mills and thinking about them. And in the meantime, Anne uh, Bosch of uh, Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mills was kind enough to send down some of her yarn and to answer even more questions. Um, so I wanted to show you, um, this is some of the beautiful yarn. This is a natural worsted um, woolen yarn that they 
uh, mill and sell up at Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mills. And I swatched some of it up because I think this is gonna turn into a hat or mittens or something really nice and squishy. And I wanted to show you the ways that their yarn um, knits up because it's available. You can um, check out their website, you can look at their um, print catalog for all the different yarns and I'll show you in a minute. So this is that woolen yarn, just natural. I did some garter, I did some stockinette, and then I did just a little bit of kind of faux cabling, just to give you a sense. Um, because it's a two-ply yarn, so it would actually be really good for this kind of open lace work. Um, and the yarn is two-ply, but because it's woolen spun, you see how the plies don't come apart quite as easily? Let's see if the camera can do it. The plies don't come apart quite as easily. It's um, a woolen spun yarn is very different from a worsted spun yarn. And if you feel the, the difference in weight, like this is a very light yarn that is very warm. Woolen yarns are incredibly warm uh, because they have air, more air trapped in them between the plies. So if you look at some of her other yarn that she sent, and this is for a giveaway, um, there's this beautiful, um, these are all woolen yarns and different colors. Um, these are fingering weight, 100% uh, wool, uh, and they're both two plies in this beautiful, these two beautiful colorways. We're gonna do a giveaway with that. And Anne also sent the, um, basically the print catalog for Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mill, I'll show you up here. So this is Blackberry Ridge up in Wisconsin. And in her catalog, you can kind of check out um, all the different colorways that they have and the yarn that they're milling um, and selling. And this is these are their own lines of yarn. So tons and tons of different styles, um, lace weight, fingering weight, um, kind of nubby yarn. Um, they have this yarn called Color Flow. And it's a really beautiful blend of these different colors coming together. Um, they dye a lot of their fiber before they um, millet so that they can create these blended beautiful heathered kind of colors um, So Anne has been this huge source of information. I absolutely love her yarn I mean the way that it's knitting up is just really pretty and I think it would be really good for a sweater because It would be really light and it would be so you wouldn't have the weight of a sweater even though it would be kind of incredibly warm So I'm kind of thinking maybe that's what I need to knit the next sweater out of. That would be really fun, actually. Okay. Anne Bosch of the Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mill was kind enough to send along such good woolen treats for you guys. Oh, and I've showed you um, what it's like to knit up their beautiful woolen natural yarns. She sent some of their um, gorgeous fingering weight yarns in these colorways. Um, this is Blackberry over here. And on the other side, we have What's this one called? Boundary Waters. Perfect. You can see those gorgeous colors and you can see the kind of, um, they're beautiful uh, two-ply fingering weight yarns, uh, hand-painted, both of them. So two yarns, two winners. And what I'd like you guys to do is leave a comment here um, telling us uh, whether you like woolen or worsted yarn and if you don't know yet that's okay um tell us like why you'd like to try it why you'd like to try some woolen yarn if you've never tried it before um but anything about woolen worsted yarn something like that in the comments here over on the Ravelry thread or on the blog and you'll be entered to win um two different prize packages and i'll announce the winner in a couple of weeks thank you Anne, so much for sending this yarn for the sample testing and for the giveaway and for sharing all of your knowledge um, with me and with the podcast viewers. Um, it's been a wonderful experience to get to know Anne, so thanks so much. So, just two segments left of the podcast. The first is a review of Making Stories Magazine, number two. Um, this issue came out, I believe, at the beginning of November, and I just got my review copy in the mail uh, two days ago, so it's been so much fun to check this out. I put a shorter review up on the blog, and I thought I'd talk to you here about a few of the patterns. Um, one of the lovely things about this magazine uh, is that it's ad-free, and the... Um, the two lovely ladies who have set this whole thing in motion, um, Hannah Lisa Hofferkamp and Verena Kors, um, have a, a real um, 
uh, mantra of sustainability about the whole magazine and trying to make it uh, as sustainable as possible. Um, plus, they work directly with a lot of the designers for this, um, for these issues, and this issue has six sweaters, and they're beautiful. And one of the things I, I mean, it has six sweaters, here's the basics, right? Six sweaters, two socks, two hats, and a cowl. So. It's a lot of pattern for uh, a little book like this. And if you're interested in that sustainability thing and you don't want to get a paper version, you can get an e-copy via Ravelry. Um, and that way you don't have to kill a tree. <laughs> um, so one of the things I wanted to tell you guys about, because on the blog I talked um, a lot about the sweaters, I talked about their sustainability model, I talked about some of the essays in here. There's one on being knitworthy. There's also... Um, essays on uh, just thinking about um, inclusivity in the knitting industry and uh, they've off they've featured designers before um, there's a nice essay on seeds uh, and stitches uh, there's just a lot of like really beautiful photography too so it's just a gorgeous kind of magazine to be you know flipping through it's full color um, gorgeous photographs color paper it's just it's beautiful you know um, the sweaters, I was looking through the patterns just to give you guys a little bit more of a kind of insight onto them. They're top-down sweaters for the most part. I don't think there were any that were bottom-up. So if you're a top-down sweater knitter, this is definitely like six sweater patterns that would work for you. And they range from the more complex patterns. So I'd say the one on the cover, and this is Holly on the cover, um, is a little bit more complex because you're holding um, two strands of yarn together, one being a mohair strand. Let's see if the, yeah, that's focusing in there a little bit, I think. Um, and it's an all over kind of like beautiful cable-y um, pattern on the front, so it's a little more complex. Um, and then you have something like Mutt, which has the beautiful brioche um, detail around the collar. Uh, so, so there are some that, that, you know, you can learn some things, you can expand your skills. Um, there's a great hooded sweatshirt in here. And this one is called, I forget the name. This one's called uh, Zingiber. And it's a beautiful hooded sweatshirt with some cable details down the back. Um, so you've got some complicated stuff in here if you're interested in kind of stretching yourself and learning um, more about how to knit things. But you also have things like Stern, which is a beautiful kind of yoked um, pullover that is, uh, I think would be a fairly simple knit for somebody who wanted to just start out thinking about doing a little bit of... Um, uh, you know, knits and pearls and some texture up on their yoke. Plus this pattern is by Verena Kors, who's one of the editors, and she provides adult sizes, like a million different adult sizes, plus kid sizes. So it's a sweater that's really versatile. If it's something that you want to knit for yourself and knit for a kid or a grandkid, like I have. <laughs> um, so there, there's a lot of kind of um, versatility here, a lot of um, different things for different levels of knitters um, and if you're interested in just putting together like a hat or a sock pattern or something like that you've got that here too so it's a nice range um, this is open heart just some of the socks that are here I think they're just beautiful they look like little slippers to me kind of perfect um, and there's a color work cowl in here as well in case you're interested in kind of testing your um, you know expanding your color work um, ability. This this cowl is called graphite, and I think it's just, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's got some really nice details going on. So I am in love with making stories, mostly because they feature so many sweaters uh, of so many kinds, uh, but it's a great kind of magazine, I think, a pattern book um, for knitters of all levels, and you can learn something from uh, hats to cowls to slippers, socks to sweaters, um, and I'd highly recommend it. I, I like the work they're doing, um, and I really feel like um, it's a it's a company that is run by a couple of independent women, and I really just dig that. So if you want to get a copy and you're in the United States, um, our local um, stockist is Corrine of the Woolly Thistle, and 
uh, you can pick up copies there. I think she still has them in stock. And if you're in other places, I know Canada has a stockist. And then if you're in um, the UK or Europe, there are stockists there as well. So you can check it out and pick it up. They are also offering a subscription now so that you can never miss an issue, which seems like a pretty darn good idea to me. So that's Making Stories Magazine number two. Um, I hope you get your copy. And if you want to check out all the patterns, you just go to the Ravelry um, page, which I'll put in the show notes, and you can check out um, all the patterns before you decide if you want to get the whole magazine or just um, enjoy looking at the patterns. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least on today's podcast, I have a couple announcements. One is the giveaway winners for um, the Dawn Brown Independence Wool uh, giveaway. So we have two prize packages from Dawn. One includes this awesome women of wool um, t-shirt and a skein of their beautiful mohair yarn. And this is the Independence Mill, um, Independence Fiber Mill down in Independence, Texas. This is their mohair once again. So lustrous and beautiful. Oh my god, look at that. Wow, that's really coming out nice on the camera. So this is one prize package and the other is some of their gorgeous um, Texas Tweed Light uh, and their Range Base, which are both in their natural colors here. Um, really gorgeous and squishy. Oh, so soft. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on these. Uh, and our winners are, they were drawn by random number, uh, and we have Ashley Scott and Sunny W. So Ashley Scott and Sunny W, congratulations on winning the two prize packages. I've notified you on YouTube. If you wanna send me an email at knittingthestash at gmail.com with your postal digits and data, I will get these packages out to you as soon as possible. And until next time, I think that's it for the cast. So I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Take care, happy knitting, bye-bye.